stuff doesn't matter people do it's it's a hint at what, what we ultimately want with all of our actions and that is love we want to be loved by other people we we, we crave <laughs> I, I mean some of us crave more attention than others mm -hmm. but 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 even that all of it is just uh, a longing for love Killing time means different things to different people. I say we're we're hunters on the prowl for time for time to kill, and what I mean by that is like when when you are the one killing your time, then that means you're doing whatever you want with it, and that doesn't necessarily mean something unproductive. I mean, uh, when you have full control over your time, you can do whatever you want with it, and you feel no pressure to 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 you know do a certain job or or uh, impress a certain person or whatever but you really truly decide that this is what i want to spend my time on right now uh for me that often is you know writing or doing something creative or having this conversation this is this is uh, i mean i don't get paid for doing this but i sure as hell like doing it uh and so so i and if i can provide others with some sort form of value by while doing something that I love to do why why wouldn't I do that I mean and that's what uh, I feel very lucky to be able to do something I love for a living now and something I truly love I never feel forced to do anything Bitcoin related not really I feel like everything I do in Bitcoin I do for my own enjoyment first and foremost so so I am killing my time by doing something that apparently has value to other people because they seem to like what I do. And I I, uh, I think you you know what I'm talking about. And I think you had a similar journey to say the least. I mean, you had a, a more uh, steep journey than I had maybe, but but you, I think you know what I'm talking about here. You, you wouldn't do this if you didn't love to do it. So, so it's an inanimate object for five years and then uh, all of a sudden it comes springs to life again and nobody knows why so so there are these strange things and if you look up the wikipedia definition of of uh, life not even that is like even the wikipedia says that there's no consensus among scientists uh, uh, around the definition of this word so and it, in that sense it makes a lot it, it makes it a lot easier to argue that Bitcoin actually is a new life form uh, that is in a symbiotic relationship with with us and with our brains, uh, especially sen since your Bitcoins can effectively die. Of course, you can you can you can guess and guess for millions of years until you find that private key again. But if it's lost for all for all practical purposes, that private key is dead when it's lost. So, uh, and I, f I find it very, very fascinating. And the 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 thought experiment in in this book is like, imagine Hal Finney. You know that Hal Finney, cryo froze his head when he died, right? So so Hal Finney's head is in a tank somewhere in ice. Imagine that before he died, he me memorized the private key. There were no sealed phrases uh, back then when 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 Hal died, uh, unfortunately. So it would be hard for him to memorize it. But he could have memorized a, a, a string of thirty numbers between zero and F. <laughs> he he could have memorized an entire private key. And imagine imagine we we discovered the technology to resurrect cryo frozen heads like 400 years from now and he wakes up and he signs a transaction <laughs> and satoshi's coins move <laughs> like just just the thought of that is 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 beyond mind-blowing to me like what is that what where is the line between information and data and so we've only ever seen this this type of world where there's a, an elite leeching value out, off of everyone else by diluting the value of everyone's money and making everyone into a hamster running around in their wheels thinking they'll be happy if, they're, if they can just afford a new car or a, a, a new vacation every year. And I don't think that is 
um, that would be reality in the future. I think we're headed somewhere else uh, because of this phenomenon that Bitcoin changes view as much as it does. So, uh, and in, in the book, I talk a lot about time preference and how time preference is related to fear and love. And that a high time preference is a, a fearful mode of being because when you don't have anything, if, you, if you're robbed of everything you own, you, uh, um, you need to find food and shelter and you need to, to think very short term. I think the Beatles were right. Uh, all you need is love. They just hadn't found the mathematical formula for it yet, which is Bitcoin. So, so what we're doing by running this mathematical experiment in, in the back of our heads is we're, we're uh, the private keys we have there. There, and that's what I think is so beautiful. And uh, I think the term toxic maximalism is so wrong in that sense, because what we're doing is we're for no selfish reason at all. We're, we're warning people about about scammers and, you know, trying to make the world a better place. When you realize that you, you realize that you don't need all this material bullshit, you can just own it anyway by not needing it. And it ties into so much, like if I get a parking ticket, uh, I, I used to get angry when I got a parking ticket or, or a speeding ticket or anything, thing, or something like that. I don't think I ever had a speeding ticket. Well, I did in Germany, but that doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, 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 the gut reaction is to be angry at the ticket or angry at what just happened to you. Oh shit, I have to pay this. And then you go around frustrated. But then you're paying the double price for the parking ticket because it's already costing you money, but now you're letting it cost you time in form of uh, in the form of like your anger and your energy being focused on this bullshit when you could just pay the goddamn thing and forget about it and go on with your life. So so I try I constantly try to be more like that to to not care about stuff that I cannot. Uh, do anything about or or stuff that is pointless for me to try to do anything about when I could focus on something something bigger and something more important instead um, and I, I think that Bitcoin can actually make people become more like that over time uh, of course it won't lead to a utopia or anything like that I don't believe we will get to a perfect world or that there's an end point somewhere but that's not the point as long as the vectors are pointing in that direction we lead humanity into a, a a friendlier more loving more trust more trusting place that that's always a good thing um and yeah that which you can do without your own i think more people should take that to heart and, and try to live that way That's why I'm so passionate about this and I, I will never stop doing it because I know deep inside my heart that I'm doing something good for, for not only my children, but for all children. <laughs> and it, it's just, yeah, it, it sounds <laughs> it sounds tacky when I talk about it in these terms, but, but uh, it, it's a true passion because of, because of these thoughts. And I always try to imagine what that other side might look like. Like, what what is a hyper Bitcoinized world? What what does that entail? And what does it look like? And to me, it's the the only conclusions I can draw is like, Bitcoin changes people a lot. And the, and you know this personally. I know this personally. I mean, we. Um, we become more stoic and less. We, we crave fewer material goods. We, we just want a good life and we just want to be sure that we we can survive long term and we can reproduce and provide something for our children. And that does not necessarily mean uh, a, a ton of crappy Christmas gifts from cheap Chinese plastic toys. That's not it. We're, we're, we're trying to build something long term. He, he could have memorized an entire private key. 
And imagine, imagine we we discovered the technology to resurrect cryo frozen heads like 400 years from now, and he wakes up and he signs a transaction, <laughs> and Satoshi's coins move. <laughs> like, just just the thought of that is 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 beyond mind blowing to me. And in one section of this documentary, Trey Parker says, uh, I could have spent two more months on this script and it would have become 5% better. Right. So it's simply not worth it. So if you want to get anywhere and produce stuff, uh, you have to settle for 95% perfection and not 100 because otherwise you're, you're stuck forever. And I, I found that to be very true. When, when I was doing music before, I, I spent a whole year making a very crappy overproduced album once because we just fin we just put more and more touches on everything. Is, is this a correct hi-hat sound and so on? And it, it's just, a f you don't get anywhere. And it, the, the end result is often more stale and boring than it would have been if you just have kept that creative motor going because you're learning every time you're doing so the next time you the next book you write will, will be better uh, if if you had written one before then uh, then then if, if it would have been your first book i mean you can always improve uh, so 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 that's what i try to do i try to i aim for 95% per perfection but not more bitcoin the protocol and bitcoin like the the computer program surrounding it could have had no part in that. I could have done this entire journey without ever touching what we define as Bitcoin. And I would call that using Bitcoin anyway, because when we're talking about Bitcoin, we're using Bitcoin. We're, we're, we're using Bitcoin, the word, which is just as much a part of Bitcoin as Bitcoin, the protocol. <laughs> but we're using the word, uh, to exchange information with each other to find this deeper reality. If you've ever been in a life-threatening situation where, where you thought you were going to die, uh, or that there was a great probability, that uh, a high probability that you would die, you you, you tend to reevaluate reevaluate your life after that, uh, and you start to value your your time more because you you get a reminder that it's limited uh, everyone dies so uh, and like i said bitcoin is a perfect representation of that so uh, it's a bit of a stretch that that enables us to to trust each other more but i really think it does because when, when you have corrupt money that does not accurately represent that then you you engage in voluntary interactions with each other. A voluntary action and a transaction are, are the same thing, uh, um, as long as the money is is fair and uh, uh, and you can trust it. So, yeah. so 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 objective reality can be pretty weird too without this, you know, uh, observer um, creating everything theory and you know i personally have a have a gut feeling that the quantum mechanics and the probabilistic nature of the of the the, the, the smallest units have something to do with consciousness that 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 is connected to why we at least per perceive that we have free will and, and and such things and that we can actually um uh, and i think we probably can uh, influence our own reality a lot more than we intuitively think we can. If we just set our minds to doing something, we can make things happen and it's more powerful than we think. The physicists get really angry when you throw them around too much and you talk about entropy being something else than this measurable thing. And it's the same thing with the Bitcoin is energy debate. Many people get really upset when we say that Bitcoin is energy because it's not really energy in the physics sense. But we we sort of have to 
use some words to describe this thing and maybe energy is the it's not a perfect metaphor but it might be a good good enough metaphor and why shouldn't we use it if it was um i'm unsure if it is or not um uh, but but i th i still think like every word surrounding bitcoin every metaphor in bitcoin is is slightly off there, yeah. and there there can be no perfection in describing bitcoin because it's an entirely new thing so we can't really describe it we can't describe what it does to our heads we can't uh, describe what it does to our and if you look up the wikipedia definition of of uh, life not even that is like even the wikipedia says that there's no consensus among scientists uh, uh, around the definition of this word so and it, in that sense it makes a lot it, it makes it a lot easier to argue that bitcoin actually is a new life form uh, that is in a symbiotic relationship with with us and with our brains uh, especially since since your bitcoins can effectively die 